ritual in the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Komozo Mudumi. I'll be give, delivering the message of the day. Just want us to bow our heads first and pray so we can invite the Holy Spirit to be with us today. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace, Lord. Father, we come giving thanks and praise, Lord Jesus, that we have yet awoken for to see another day, Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we come bearing gratitude, Father God. We come bearing praise, Lord Jesus. We are thankful, Lord, that you have given us yet another opportunity, Father God, that we might learn your word. We might gain a little bit more understanding about how complex you are, Father God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've sent us the Holy Spirit, Father, that we may understand your complexities, that we might marvel at your word, Father God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you open our spiritual eyes and ears, that we might learn and remember who the Lord is in our lives, that we can have a clearer revelation of who God is in our lives. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we pray and we thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, brethren, as this is Women's Month, we're going to unpack the women of the Bible and the challenges that they've met the 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 way they experienced god and how god came through and how in then we learn who god is but still they teach us the different levels of experiencing god for ourselves that in each and in each of our daily lives we get an experience of who God is because the way you experience God might not be the way I experience God but in our lifetime we need to have had an experience or an encounter a spiritual encounter of God and who he is that we can learn a different aspect of who he is and get to experience that because the Lord shows us that he's not a stagnant God. He's the God that is ever evolving as does the world. So there are different aspects to how he, he shows himself or reveals himself, himself to us. So this morning... We will be learning about Hannah, the mother of Samuel. We will read about Hannah in the first and second chapter of First Samuel. That we get to learn who she is and how she experienced God. So I'm going to just read in the Bible, First Samuel chapter 1. Um, we'll start at verse 2 and he had two wives the name of one was Hannah and the name of the other one was Penina and Penina had children and Hannah had no children and this man went up to out of his city yearly to worship and sacrifice unto the Lord the Lord of hosts in Shiloh and the two sons of Eli Hophini and Phineas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was and when the time was that Elakan offered, he gave to Penina his wife, 
and to all her sons and her daughter portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore to make her fret, because the Lord had shut her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Alakan, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they'd eaten in Shiloh and after they drank. Now Eli the priest sat up upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord of days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. In verse 15, um, oh, okay, before we get to that, and it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. So this first bit, we read about the afflictions that Hannah went through. In the second chapter, we see that she had no children. In the fourth verse, we see how she was blessed by her husband in a double portion. Because if you read from other versions, it says it's she was given a double portion from her husband. In verse 5, it deals with her barrenness. Even though she was barren, her husband was not worried about that because he loved her and he didn't care that he did, she didn't have kids. In verse 6, we learn about the mockery that she received from the other wife of her husband, probably from the, the, the region where she stayed, probably the family members, some family members probably mocked her for not have, being able to give her husband kids. In verse 11, she bargains with the Lord and saying to God, if you give me this one gift, I will offer this gift to you just to prove that I can be of good to my husband, to show that the Lord has been gracious to me. In verse 20, she gets her breakthrough as she's able to conceive and get a son. And further down, as you read, the Lord blesses her in double portion because she was able to bear more kids, sons and daughters for her husband. So the main um, lesson that we learn from Hannah is she seeks God's attention. She already gets the attention of her husband, 
it's enough but not enough in a spiritual level because she shows or teaches us about spiritual authority that what you speak through your mouth or in your heart of hearts to the Lord, he hears you. We've got the power and the authority to make commands that are good for us that deal with the work the work of the Lord that we can have that spiritual encounter only if we ask the Lord he will provide for us she deals with overcoming jealousy and rejection because she's probably jealous that her sister wife has kids and she doesn't have and she she cries out to the lord probably that lord take out this jealousy this rejection that i'm feeling and this resentment towards this woman and probably she she kept on weeping to the lord or maybe when the mockery became too much she decided lord do i really deserve to go through this do i really have to suffer because i'm your child and you promise me that you will be with me so show yourself show yourself that you will deliver on your promises that you make and she prays for healing that the lord heals her and give her a pure heart so that if her heart is pure she will be able to receive and in pureness the seed is able to germinate and come forth and and bear fruit so she needed to have a pure heart hence crying to the lord in the depthness of her heart to show that lord this is what i really want and if you give me this i give it back to you that means that lord show yourself in me so that you can be glorified and not me so the lord had to see that her heart is pure because she's willing to sacrifice that which she's crying for and she's been yearning for so she had to work to have a pure heart to show the lord her pure intentions and to 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 show the lord that whatever you give me i'm going to give it back so that you can be glorified so she she sees that the lord is able to do what he says he will do and through hana we see the perspective of god's sovereignty we see a different way of how god shows up and does things how he rules that he is not as harsh as we make him out to be he just wants us to communicate with him hana gives us a different perspective of finding strength to persevere all those years crying out to the lord and probably when they mock her they say but why do you even keep asking why don't you just stop but she persevered she keeps on going to the lord because she believes that the lord will show up for her one of these days she believes that the lord hears the lord will do unto her as she has done for her sister wife Hana shows us strength resilience fulfillment and fruitfulness because at the end of the day after trying and failing her womb finally bears fruit she finally 
receives her gift. The gifts that she, the community around her thought she didn't have. And her first gift, she gifts the Lord. Hannah shows us that we need to unlock our overflow of multiplication and increase of spirituality or spiritual authority. She shows us that we can be able to do that. We have been given the authority to unlock doors that seem to be have been closed. <clears throat> Doors that we can only dream about, but we can be able to open those doors. I read somewhere that the you cannot trust or rely on other people's encounter of the Lord. You need to have your own encounter of the Lord because... I cannot run with your faith. I need to have my own faith of the Lord and how he, he manifests or operates in me. I have to have my own experience of how the Lord is. I need to know the Lord for myself. So Hannah wanted to experience the Lord for herself by having children and she kept on going to the lord and saying lord i know you will give me this gift because i will not get this gift anywhere else except through you and we the fruit of the womb shows us that that is a reward a spiritual gift and for us to get those gifts God is waiting for us to reach out to him he wants us to reach out to him because we are born with those gifts already we just need the keys to unlock them and for us to unlock those gifts we need to go to to the Lord and ask for him to give us the keys because on our own strength we will fail we need him to give us the keys in hand so that we can unlock the doors that the devil thinks he has locked the, the doors that he thinks he has barricaded the angels of heaven will open those doors for us so Nobody is going to give us an experience of God. We need to experience God for ourselves. We need to reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, you need to show me the way. I need to experience you. I need to have an encounter. We have give, been given the spiritual authority since in the garden of eden the lord gave us that authority and it's up to us to take take it back and work on our faith the gifts are already within us all that we need to do is to get them activated to activate them, we need to go down on our knees and tell the Lord what we need. The Lord is mighty and just and he hears our prayers. But if we do not give him our prayers and we do not speak to him and do not tell him what is within our hearts, we will never experience him. We need to have faith that we hold the keys to unlock those doors. Just a simple woman just wanting a baby 
that she will dedicate to the Lord shows us that. That all we need to do is to keep on pouring out our hearts to him. The Lord listens. The Lord really listens. And he does answer those prayers. And we might say, no, but he, I prayed yesterday, he's not answering. When we have not matured yet, we will not see those answered prayers. The day we reach spiritual maturity that he sees we are able to handle, then he gives. And when he gives, he gives in abundance double portions of what we asked, double portions of what we could only dream about, he gives us those. The Lord always gives. And all that he wants from us is for us to, to want to experience him. He wants us just to be able to say, Lord, I just want to know you. I just want to know your heart. I give you my heart so that I can know your heart. That's all he wants. We can have everything else, but all that he really wants is our heart. And for him to come and manifest himself through us. Because what you pray for and when God gives you what you pray for, he really comes through. He really manifests. He really shows off. God is a show off and when he shows off, you will know that he is showing off. He really pulls through and when he does, is those times when you really feel like, but is he really hearing me? But you know he hears us. So we must, we must learn or strive to be like Hannah and not give up and not think that the Lord does not hear us. He really hears us and he really understands us and he knows what we need he gave us what we need he just wants us to to come to him to learn and and to learn to to talk to him so that he can give us what we deserve so that he can give us those keys to open doors that we think are closed to give us keys to to feel him at each and every given opportunity that's all he wants that's all that he ever wants us is to feel. So I pray and hope that we are able to experience the Lord. And be like Peter and walk with the Lord and hopefully the Lord makes us or builds his church upon us that that the, the gates of hell will not prevail the other um, portion the other portion is that we just need to know that The Lord will always be there for us. And in a way, we need to be there for him. I don't know if it makes sense, but he just wants us to be there for him as well so that he can move in us and move with us. And hopefully that is heaven on earth for us. 
end. We will have a better revelation of God and His love and what He wants for us. That the Lord is ours and He wants nothing less but the best for us. And the Lord is always there for us. He walks with us each and every day. He just wants us to open our mouths and ask Him to abide in us. And we need to always know that the Holy Spirit is there to guide us, to hold our hands. And we just need to allow the Lord to take our hand and walk with us and show us the way. Because we are nothing without Him. And with our own human understanding, we might not accomplish much. And if we take anything out of this is that the Lord loves us. He loves us to the depths of the ocean to the point of giving out his son to die for us. So let us be virtuous, resilient, and persevere and know that God is there for us. Always there. And we can make it through. No matter what, we will make it through. So, that's the word of the day. Let's pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, I praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love. We pray that we may have the boldness, the power, and the strength to come to you that we can ask that you move with us that we can ask that you walk with us that we can have a different encounter of who you are father in the name of our lord and savior lord jesus christ we pray father god that in this day father god we might come to you father god and ask of nothing but for you to move with us, Father God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. That we can experience your presence, Father God. That we will not be moved by what is happening around us, Father God, but we will fix our eyes upon you, Lord Jesus. That our eyes will be fixed upon your throne of grace and mercy, Father God. That we will have a spiritual encounter and take our place and have spiritual authority, Father God. We thank you and we glorify your holy name, Lord Jesus. We pray that you be with us today and forevermore, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We surrender to you, Father God. 
in the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you.